Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with host Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Search for us on your favorite podcast app, or you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so we can spread the word. If you would like to support us and get exclusive rewards, go to patreon.com slash speaking out. Find a tier that best fits you and join as a patron of the podcast. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast with host Jimmy Hinton. And Jimmy's mom, Clara. Great to have you with us. Uh, thank you to our patrons who make this podcast possible. Absolutely. We thank you. We can't thank you enough. We actually had um, a session last week with um, just some of our patrons, and that's always a an extra special session because we get to know you on a much closer and more intimate level. So thank you so much for your support, for your love. Thank all of you for listening in, and we hope today's podcast will be especially helpful. Absolutely. Okay, today's subject a little bit, um, a little bit different than child sexual abuse. Uh, this is geared more towards uh, some of the same testing behaviors when um, an abusive person is is um, hunting, looking for uh, somebody who's just barely an adult. Uh, a lot of abusers do that, by the way. Uh, they abuse both minor children and um, kind of the, the the barely legal uh, age group, just 18 or older, or whatever the age of consent is for each state. Uh, that varies from state to state. But this came in response to a question that I, I got uh, just a couple days ago <clears throat> about somebody who um, has a relative who who's a young adult, um, you know, no longer a teenager, but, uh, but barely into her 20s. And she's being groomed by this older man, this older divorced man. Um, she could see it very clearly, but uh, obviously the the uh, young female who is being uh, groomed this way cannot see it. She's uh, sounds to me like head over heels. Uh, so the question to me was, how do we how do we right. talk to people when they're mm -hmm. being um, sought after and tested? I I still prefer the term testing because um, I I think that's more accurate than grooming. Mm -hmm. um, but when they're being tested by these old men and these old men who prey on people who are just over the age of 18, how do we get them to wake up to that? How do we get them to see that? Um, and that's, uh, it, it, it's sometimes challenging because they think that they're in love or they mm -hmm. think that they're finding love. Right. And that certainly complicates things, but we wanted to give some definitive things that you can look for. And just generally speaking, I would say look for patterns. When I do research with abusers, that's the one thing that, that I look for is what are patterns that never change. Right. Right. There are these, these that is, I, I think crystal that's... clear patterns that you can repeat over right. and over and okay. you see them real clearly. Mm -hmm. I think that's critically important for all of us to remember uh, when we're, you know, watching loved ones in a relationship or about to get into a dating relationship or some kind of a, you know, troubled waters, let's say, mm -hmm. because the patterns are there. And sometimes when, not sometimes, often, when we are the person being sought after, we don't see the pattern because no. like you said, you're kind of head, neck, heels in love or something. Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And um, let's face it. We don't think with our brains at that point. Yeah. We, you know, our hearts take over and, and we can't see clearly. Uh, one of the most gripping and life-changing books, I would say, was Gavin DeBecker's The Gift of Fear. And he talks about uh, domestic violence. And he talked about all these people. When you see people in front of the news, family members and mm -hmm. so forth, they all say the same thing. Well, we had no idea. We never saw right. this coming. Right. We, there was there was never any indication that uh, that they were abusive. We said the same thing. Um, you know, when when we found out about my right. dad, uh, we didn't have any clue. So what Gavin DeBecker said is that abuse never happens in a vacuum. 
there are always signs. There are always things that, that we can be looking for that even abusers who are the best at hiding abuse still um, show some of these signs, some of these patterns, and we can observe them. We can see them. So look for these patterns. Um, and I'll just start going down through. We just kind of made a, a, a quick list. But um, does this person flirt with or hang out with other people your age? Uh, and I'm talking about older men, uh, typically older men who uh, start pursuing, aggressively pursuing uh, very young uh, females. Well, let me interject something. Being a female, some people uh, might be saying, what thrill could there possibly be for a young girl uh, being sought after by an older man? But you'll see that happens a lot, especially in a, a, a family or in a situation where that girl did not have a real good relationship with her father. And um, that I, I saw it time, I've seen it time and time again, where there is this um, connection, but it's more of a father daughter on the girl's girl side rather than. Uh, you know, when the man is pursuing her, she just wants to be loved. And, and a lot of a it, lot of girls are not looking for a sexual relationship. No. They're looking for um, a trusted, strength, yeah, a trust, trusted yes, man yeah. who who they can be friends with in in her life. And uh, you know, there are so many abusers who are who are they can easily find well, the perfect those target. kinds of opportunities that, and exploit them. That girl them. is yeah. the perfect target. Absolutely. So that's what they do. But, you know, right. number one, do they flirt with or hang out with other people your age? Uh, don't fall for this line that, oh, you're the only one. You're the, you know, you're the only one I have eyes for. Mm -hmm. uh, don't listen to that and believe it. Look for signs of this person right. flirting with other, uh, right. other people your age because chances are good that it's happening. Uh, number two, what does their social media reveal? Are they being gross on social media, on other people's posts? Um, are they telling other women or girls or boys for that matter? Uh, are they telling them how pretty they are or how handsome they are? And, uh, are they just being plain inappropriate and creepy? Uh, social, look media at their social media is an incredibly wonderful eye-opener. Let's just say yeah. that. When I want to find out anything about a, an employee that I may hire, I immediately go to their uh, Facebook page. I look on social media, Instagram, and it tells me a story mm -hmm. instantly. But when I think back, I'm going to use your dad as an example. This is before we knew what was going on or anything. I was floored, be and I remember sitting at my computer and just shaking my head like this. He would find little girls who were wearing tutus and comment, what a cute mm -hmm. little tutu. Yeah. He was 62 years old. And and, I, and by the way, that's intentional. This is yes. not something that they just can't help right. themselves. And so the careful person, <sighs> they're going to get away with it more often than those who are, who are less careful. It's very intentional. They purposely put really gross comments on on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Bold. They put yeah. it there on purpose. Yeah. Right. And I asked my dad about that, and he said every single every single word, every single like on every photo. He said that was all intentional. It well, was all well, intentional. And I remember just thinking, I don't understand him. He's sixty two years old. And he's liking little girls' tutus. Mm -hmm. It made zero sense. But, you know, that's where what that's you and I are talking about. That's part of that testing about, process, right. too, though. Like, Stand to see, back, does anybody... look, yeah. check out the social media because there are stories there for sure. And I'll it's... give you, I mean, I'll read. I pulled this up just as an example. And I thought, you know, we have a local uh, weather forecaster. And I've just, you know, I've. I saw this when she first came on. I saw it with the previous forecaster. Uh, this is commonplace online. Um, you get these men who comment, and, and they're really quite gross uh, every time these poor women are 
trying to tell you the weather. They're up there trying to do their job. Yeah. And you have these perverts putting these gross comments on Facebook. Uh, so I'm just going to read some of these comments. They're, they're not real gross, so uh, these aren't too bad. But no, they, but they when do, you, they do when, get when, gross, Jimmy, but they're inappropriate. They, uh, they're very inappropriate, and as a woman, I can tell you, you don't like those comments. No. They are not flattering comments. No. At all. So here's this guy. Um, beautiful dress today, Maddie. And then he has, you know, all these emojis that, uh, you know, what's on his mind. Um, Greg over here. You make that dress look great. You are beautiful. And thanks for the great job you do. Okay. What does that have to do with weather? Um uh, you look beautiful. This is another guy, Vinny. You look beautiful in that dress. Uh, Jerry, in all capitals. Good morning, your, Y-O-U-R. You're <laughs> beautiful, Maddie. Um, Bill says, Maddie, you warm up every day. Keep the personality. <laughs> you too, mm. Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. Keep up the personality, Maddie. Yeah. Um, sorry, I should, well, yeah, I should make fun of them because this is just stupid. Um, Stephen, good morning, Maddie. And then it's like all these smiley faces and rainbows. And, um, Harold, good morning, beautiful. Uh, Charlie, beautiful, Maddie, bunch of hearts. Uh, Jerry, gorgeous weather, girl. Oh, a whole bunch of hearts. Most of these guys are married, by the way. I just quickly clicked on their profiles. Um, and if you look on their profiles, you'll see all kinds of inappropriate stuff. One guy posted a video of, like, this guy sexually harassing a woman. like, And it was put up as, as a joke. Like, he thought it was a funny post that he put up. Uh, this guy, Robert. Uh, <laughs> not Robert. Robert Kim. So it's mm. a joint account with him and his wife. Happy hump day, Miss Maddie, with mm. a big heart. Um, no. Then here, Ray says, good morning, Maddie, in all capitals. Beautiful dress. So this is what I mean. Like, look for these kinds of things on social media. Um, these guys are thirsty pigs. Uh, and they'll post stuff like this. It's highly inappropriate. Well, it is. Here, here's a and uncomfortable. News, a news lady presenting the news, and that what you read has nothing to do. Not no, she's she, trying to do her job, and do. she's being sexually harassed. Right. And and it really, to be honest with you, it makes me feel uncomfortable sitting here. I don't like that. That's how, I I really don't like those comments yeah. at all. And, and uh, you know, I don't know who does. However. A young girl who has not dated much, who has grown up in a, an unloving home, mm -hmm. to have a man say, good morning, beautiful. They would you mistake know, that as flattery. Right. Yeah. What a dress. You look what, really awesome. You can warm mm -hmm. up any day. That can be mistaken very easily, very readily as, yeah. wow, he really you know, cares for me. Yeah. And so that's where the danger you know, the, is. And right? the point is to look at social media and, <laughs> right. you know, click on any one of these guys and you'll find like they're doing this to, they look at all kinds of weather forecasters right. and make these kinds of comments. Right. Not just weather forecasters, no. they're just generally Women. misogynistic yeah. and right. gross. So right. look at social media. Uh, don't fall for flattery uh, or mistake it for flattery. Look on social media and find out what, uh, what these people are up to. Um, number three, are they too charming and and mm -hmm. aggressive? Uh, do they just feel aggressive? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, are they physically going after you, whether it's with comments or is that progressing to you talked about guys coming and grabbing your arm oh, and I pulling, hey, it. beautiful, yeah. hey, I gorgeous. Um, hate that so much. It's inappropriate. I do. Right. You know, it's that it's right. not a touch. It's no, that grab that, that pulling you in right. closer yeah. to them. Really it's physically aggressive me. right and it's verbally aggressive yes um number four are they steering you towards a relationship and or steering you towards doing things that you're not comfortable with um but do you increasingly find yourself feeling obligated to 
whatever it is, you know, to dress differently, to send pictures, to, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, are, are they steering you towards a relationship that you, you don't really want to commit to? Right. Or I think uh, you use behavior. a big word, something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, there's nothing comfortable about being forced to do something that you don't want to do. Yeah, and coercion doesn't usually look like coercion on the surface, but it certainly feels like it. And that's it later on we'll talk about right. intuition. Yep. But you know, do you do you find yourself hesitating? Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself in these positions constantly where you hesitate? But then in your mind, you have to justify or or you're made to feel bad for not doing something. If so, you're being highly manipulated. Right. Um, so look for those sorts of things. Number five, are they uh, are they inappropriate with you? Are they making jokes that are sexually charged and that just make you feel uneasy where they just laugh it off? And you're ex you're also expected to laugh mm -hmm. it off. Um, are they inappropriate with you? Number six. Do they promise you things that seem too good to be true? Whether it's money, um, true happiness, vacations, uh, you know, are they promising you things but not mm -hmm. delivering? Mm -hmm. Are they promising you all these great things mm -hmm. that you stick with me and, and you'll be happy? Well, I don't really need to be with a person to be happy. I have like, a friend who you know? was so manipulated like this. The man was flashing all kinds of money. Mm -hmm. uh, he did take her on a couple of trips and she, she had left her husband because he was too boring. She said, and this man was tugging at her prior to her leaving her husband. He promised her all kinds of things, but he, he in the end treated her really like an old shoe. Yeah. And she ended up uh, leaving this man, and she is now back with her husband, thankfully. Mm -hmm. What a lesson she learned, though, about being used and abused. Yeah, and, and that's and, all and these that's false all promises. It, yeah, these promises for a better relationship, yeah. a better... But many of um, us told whatever. her because we could see it, but she felt so flattered because... You know, here was her boring husband who had mm -hmm. never paid attention to her mm -hmm. in, in many years. This man comes along and he, you know, he charmed her, mm -hmm. you know, bought her some jewelry, told her, go shopping, I'll pay for it. Get yourself a whole yeah. new wardrobe. And she did. And it felt wonderful. It's easy to fall into that trap. Very yeah. easy. We need to really be aware of the wolf that's out there. Yeah. And I mean, the other thing too, you know, along with this, do they promise you love? Do they tell right. you things like, I love you? Mm -hmm. um, right. if, if you're not even dating mm -hmm. and this person's exhibiting all these signs, just being gross with you, making you feel uncomfortable. And then they slip that in there. Oh, I think I'm falling for you. Uh, that's a really oh, common tactic yeah. with abusers. You'll hear this all the time in, in, um, in, in churches where people are abused by, um, by church leaders, they'll say things like that. Like I, I'm falling out of love with my wife and I'm falling in love with you. Well, the common that's, one. that's so common. Yeah. That ought to be the biggest red yeah, flag on right. the face of the planet. Right. Um, but you'll hear things like this. So again, look for these patterns. Um, number seven, is their language superficially possessive? Do they call you my girl that possessive language we talk about this with uh that with pedophiles huge they yes. become possessive with their language my best friend my my buddy my my little cutie um you know are they using possessive language my babe you are my and, babe and is you it misogynistic language yeah. that's right my babe yeah. my my woman Ooh, is yeah. it uh does it border on or is it flat out misogynistic mm -hmm. um because there's a difference between between calling somebody sweetheart, there's a respect, you know, language, right? And, we, and, and using that possessive, that. misogynistic yes. language, my babe, mm -hmm. you know, check out my woman, you know, and they put you on display in front of other people and make you feel like mm -hmm. really a piece of dirt, right? Um, and that's what it does feel like. Are, yeah. are they doing those sorts of things? Mm -hmm. And you'll see these patterns begin to emerge. Um, number eight, are they interested in you for you? Or are they clearly interested in your body? Do they talk about do they talk about personality traits of yours? 
do they and not superficially not like oh you're you're fun well that's a little generic like Real what generic, is generic yes what yeah. is it about me you yeah. know what what makes me unique yes. that makes you uniquely like me yes um and if Beyond, you I love things, your blue yeah, eyes not I, my my yes. goodness you you <laughs> have you have a nice you know yeah fill in the blank exactly. um yeah. because you'll hear things like this you know these guys they uh, just like the comments that I read, it's these gross, uh, just kind of degrading, all revolving around physical comments. Um, you're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You're, you know, your eyes match that dress. That that has I, I, nothing to do with you, no. your soul, or your no, personality. Right. And if that's all you ever hear, compliments aren't bad. Um Every now and then, it's okay to compliment Compliments somebody if you're, if you're dating. Like done in the right way, right? But at the right time. If that's all they focus on is the, the physical mm -hmm. stuff, and and it's just uh, you know borders on where it is misogynistic, and it just makes you feel gross. Um, if it makes you feel gross inside, you know your dad uh, it's never did any of these person. crude comments when we dated. In fact, he was genuinely kind. He was very nice, but there were patterns that I didn't pay attention to. And there was also something, and it stands out like this big, huge, blaring noise, like a drum beat. There was one day he introduced me to someone at church as his old woman. And hmm. it's like, where did that come from? Well, his dad happened to be standing nearby and heard that. And he got in your dad's face and said, don't you ever refer to any young lady in that way. You know, I just thought it was so out of place for your dad to say that. But those comments came frequently the more I got to know him. Yeah, they do I, come out. But, uh, but yeah. he would say, well, I was just joking. Mm -hmm. And because he was kind otherwise, I fell for that. I was just joking. Yeah. And so it's hard when, when you're trying to see the true picture it really is yeah absolutely um so yeah and then the last point here did you know does this person have any allegations of past abuse and here in this example uh, mm -hmm. that i was messaged about here you have a divorced and old older i mean older than me um older than me man that's who's, old i know um <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get up in your 40s, yeah. you're not this young spring yeah. chicken anymore. And you should, certainly shouldn't, in my opinion, be pursuing somebody who's um, who's this young. Just my opinion. Uh, but, you know, my, my point is this person's divorced. Find out why. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, That's important. Are there allegations of, of abuse, uh, of any kind of abuse, right. in this person's past? Uh, or is this person just overbearing? Is this person just a, a, a jerk? Um, unbearable? Who knows? But you don't know if you don't right. you look. Have to, right. And if you don't find out. But there's, right. you know, I think the temptation is to listen to the person's story. You get wrapped up in that. And you're like, oh my goodness, I... You know, and I can I can write the script for what these guys mm -hmm. tell these young women. As uh, Jimmy and I were talking, we, we said you kind of have to be like an investigator as yeah. you enter into any kind of dating relationship or when someone shows interest in you. Um, right now, I am a detective. I check out everybody uh, in, in just the basic of friendships. Back when I was dating, I did not. And yeah. that was, that's very troubling. Um, yeah. The girls, I, your sisters, uh, you boys, I don't ever remember saying to you, you know, well, check out what, you know, mm -hmm. really pay attention to them. Uh, never did. And and that's sad because we, we didn't think that way. But we have to really ask the question, is this relationship worthy? And by that, you know, is could this dating turn into a relationship and be worthy of that? What right. are my ideals? Does this person match my ideals? The crude language for me, that's a no. That that's done. I'm done. Yeah, right and there. I think too, I'm, talking I'm about done. ideals, you know, 
you know, I think it's really important for you to ask the other person first because yeah. what abusers do is yes. they information mine. I talk about information mm -hmm. mining a lot. Yes. If you spill your guts and you're like, oh, I want, you know, I want two kids and, you know, one boy and one girl and I want a house that sits on a mountainside and I want, you know. That was me. This, this, I, and this. Yeah. If yeah. you say that, this person, trust me, this person is taking mental notes mm -hmm. and then they'll reciprocate in all the right ways yes. and say, oh my goodness, it's like we're, I like we were meant to thing. be, like the universe I pulled us house. together. I yeah. want a house in That's the exactly what I want. I want a big family. Yeah. Oh, you mean you want to be a stay-at-home mom? That's what I'm looking for in a wife. I yeah. want all of the, yeah. So be sure to ask yeah. them first, oh, and goodness. I think that's perfectly yes. fair. So, yes. Um, yeah, why don't you talk about doing these um, relationship well, assessments? While right, you're, and, while and you're what dating, do you know about this dating. person? You know, before you even begin dating, so to speak, uh, what do you know about them? And by that, I mean more than their hair color and their mm -hmm. height and their eye color. What do you know about what makes up the content of this person? How do they think? You know, what? Yeah. What? How do they treat others? Um, there again, I'll keep using your dad because that's really the, the only long lasting relationship I ever had. One of the first things I remember saying to him was, was how mean he was. He would make fun of disabled people mm -hmm. sitting in class. We had a teacher who had one arm missing here and he would sit through that. I still remember class. hearing some of his jokes oh, about that person. But, As a but, kid, he told us kids jokes yeah, about. Just, and I remember saying to him after class so many times, that is just mean, you know, to do mm -hmm. that. You know, the one arm band that was going by, you know, and he just, mm -hmm. but I didn't pay attention. And that yeah. same character trait rolled over into some of the abusive um, things that he did. Yeah. So we need to know that person. If you are a person who loves God and you, your life is about God, ask that person right up front. I remember asking your dad, where are you with God? And his response, and I should have paid attention to it there again. He said, I'm not really with God too much. He said, there's one thing I do not want to ever be. I said, what's that? A preacher. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. He said, I will never be a preacher. And I said, why? Well, now I understand why he was living a double life even then, but he went into preaching because, whoa, whoa, that was easy. But I didn't pay sense. attention yeah. to that. But find out what are that person, you know, morally, um, decisions, what, how truthful is that person? Yeah. F find out, you know, get to know the person. That's huge. And I did say, you know, be an investigator. Um, don't get caught up in... When that person flatters you and they say you're beautiful, um, do they make you feel beautiful? What's your gut telling you? Yeah. I think our guts tell us so much. Our, yeah. I, we really know when a person is genuine or are they just doing that to get us to do something more physically with them? I think we have to really train ourselves to, to listen to our intuition. And that's something yes. Ashley Easter, like, you know, she does intuitive training now. Uh, to really train people to listen to that uh, intuition because we all have it. All of us to a do. degree have intuition. I think that's God instilled, Jenny. And, I really do. And I think the biggest thing is like I knew from the time I was little that my dad, something didn't feel right. And um, so, as but did I, never, I, I was never trained. It, but... I was never trained how to listen to that or no. how to pursue it. So, yeah, very important. What yes, does, what's our your gut gut, what does our gut tell us? And then dating should not be secretive. Often you'll have... Um, these men who are older or who mm -hmm. have passed, they'll just say, well, it's, it's not time to tell, you know, like your parents yep. or your family. That wouldn't be Especially good. a huge red flag. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Why right. not? Why, why right. can't we tell? Well, it just isn't the right time. No, that, that's yep. a huge red flag. Yep. All of those things combined. But um, again, I, I know from being in, you know, different situations where I should have known better. When somebody brings it to your attention, we awful, often bristle at that mm -hmm. because we don't want to believe it. We yeah. really don't. And, and then we get defensive. And That's we get very defensive. Who are you? Response. Or you're just jealous. 
you're jealous, you know, mm-hmm. because I have this great guy or, or great woman and great girl. And, um, but not so if you know the person who's talking to you or who gives you a written, you know, I think we should each have a checklist, actually. I did. I just didn't use it. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I did have it, but, you know, with, with what we want. But when we're being pursued or when we get comments, like, I think the weatherman, the weather lady, those comments are so telling. Mm-hmm. If that's being done to us, just run from it. Just yeah. run from that type of person. They're not the kind of person we want. That's not relationship worthy at all. Yeah. Jimmy, your checklist is, I, I think, great. I don't know if you have that posted on your um, blog or your website. I don't. I was going to write a blog post on this and kind of flesh it out a little I really bit would love lo- yeah, to see that because I think it's that critically important for both girls and guys, you yeah. know, for, for males and females. Guys that are dating, they can get hoodwinked also. Mm-hmm by girls who, oh my, you know, are not the type of girl that are is relationship worthy. And girls can manipulate, use, abuse, uh, maybe not physically, but emotionally and destroy a person. We have to remember that, that uh, when we enter a relationship, it can wreck us up or yeah. help us to just, you know, become the best person in the world. Yeah, and there's no reason to rush in anything either. No. I mean, it's. I, no. I was a little bit odd, but I, I didn't date. And I just, you know, I saw just what normal broken relationships mm. did to some of my friends, both male and female, right. uh, growing up. And they, they were just constantly miserable and depressed and, you know, betrayed and all this stuff. And I, I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just date around and. And what a, a bunch blessing, of, what a blessing for you and Natalie. She, yeah. She didn't either. Yeah. I mean, and, nope. and even no. us, even when we started, it was really, really slow. And we got to know each other before we started dating. You know, we so got to be friends. That is so, so it wasn't like yeah. rushing into right. to this and, hey, I want to date you. And just this aggression right out of the right. gate. And I think that oh. ought to make everybody hesitate and be Absolutely. like, what's the ulterior motive if somebody's right. this aggressive in pursuing me pushing pushing yeah just yeah yeah Yeah. right so yeah be alert and be aware and um, listen to your gut definitely listen to your gut so we'll leave you with that truth bomb today listen to your gut Uh, it's there for good reason and uh if if you can start looking at some of these patterns and, and see what the patterns are uh, there will be a pattern that emerges, there is. good or bad. Right. There will be a pattern right. that emerges, right. um, but look for it. See what the pattern is and listen to your gut. Thank you for tuning into this episode, and we'll catch you next round. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. Thank you to our patrons who make the podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker and search for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron. And check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse.